Hello, Curran here. I'm knee deep in development work for VizHub Beta, and I wanted to make a video for people who are interested in working on the open source part of this project. Uh, these are the things that I want to get done by uh, two weeks from today, and I've been working on this file management piece where you can add a new file, uh, rename a file, or delete a file. This is what we've got so far. You can click New File, and I just did the simplest possible thing and used the JavaScript built-in dialog box. And you could say, okay, I want to make a new file called like plot.js. And then that will create a new file here that's empty. And then you could import something from there in index.js, and it will work. The rest of this video is going to be a deep dive into the code behind all this. So it's like how to get set up with this project, um, how to use Redux and Redux Observable to implement these features that we're going to do next in this video, which is renaming files and deleting files. And also I'll go over how this new file thing works just so you can get a sense of the overall flow in the system. Here's the open source VizHub project. And I'm going to say clone or download with SSH, copy that, and then here I'm in my directory with a bunch of repositories, and I'm going to say git clone, and then paste that URL. It's going to clone down to my machine. And then cd into that directory, vizhub UI. And then npm install to install all the dependencies. And I'll, while that's happening, I can show you the dependencies in package.json we use well it's bootstrapped from create react app uh, and we also use some other things like redux react redux and redux observable which is a really cool library that builds on rxjs it integrates rxjs with, with redux this project also uses sass for css and magic sandbox as the um, iframe runner sort of library, code mirror for the code editor, and at the top of this file you can see our scripts. Like we've got a post install script that runs the build script, npm run build, which runs this thing here, and then uh, it runs symlink dist, which is a weird workaround that I had to do to get the compiled CSS to show up in um, the React app. But most of the time, you won't have to think about any of that because you can just say npm start, which will run the start uh, development server of um, Create React app. So our npm install has finished. I'll clear this out and say npm start to start the server. And here we've got our working thing. So we can say hello world and it updates over there. In the open source project, I've got a pull request open, which is a work in progress for file management. So what I'm going to do next is check out this branch and continue working on it. So in a new tab, I'll say git checkout this branch file management, and then that should update. So now if I click on, oh no, I think I need to uh, restart. Yeah, there we go. So now if I click on new file, it pops up this thing. I can say new file, and my new file is there. But now what I want to do is rename this or delete it. Uh, but first, let me walk through how this works, like what happens actually when you click on new file internally. I like to use Vim. In our source directory, we've got this thing called the visualization editor and in here here's this link that says new file and when you click on it it invokes this function on new file click which is passed in from the props here and then this visualization editor is included in the IDE component there it is visualization editor and there's we're just drilling this prop down from ab above on new file click. See it's passed in here as well from the props. 
uh, it's passed in from the thing that invokes this IDE component, which is this index.js file here, uh, which is a uh, Redux, I guess you would say a container component, which has all this Redux stuff, map state to props, map dispatch to props. In map dispatch to props, this is where on new file click is actually implemented. So when you click on that, it will dispatch a new action called create new file. And create new file comes from the action creators. Here it is, create new file. Uh, let's just look at how that's defined. It's in the Redux directory under action creators. And it's right here, create new file. What happens next is that an epic implemented using um, Redux observable will sort of intercept that event. See, it takes as input a stream of events, and then it filters by type create new file, and then it says, okay, whenever we get that action, we're gonna say prompt, which is that built-in dialog, um, to get a new file name, and then we get that out, and then we return a new action, which is called new file created, with the file name that we got from the user. And new file created is just another action creator. See here in action creators, it's just this, uh, this thing here. And the thing that intercepts this action is a reducer. It's actually the files reducer. See, when it gets this action new file created, we create a new file object with a name of the file name from the action, and then an empty string as the text. And then this line of code uh, just adds that file to our list of files and returns it as the new state for the files part of our Redux state tree. So that's what's happening here. We click this, it dispatches the create new file action, and the thing that pops this up is actually the epic, and then we can say uh, foo.js. And then when we say okay, that dispatches a new action called new file created, and then the reducer adds that file with an empty string as the content to our list of files. All right, so creating new files is basically working. Uh, what we want to do next, I think, is rename it. And I just want to get the simplest possible thing to work. So let's say we're going to do this. If we double click the file, it should pop up that dialog and let us rename the file. The first order of business is to intercept that double click action. So in our code here, let's navigate over to that, uh, that list of files. And that would be in visualization editor file list. See, we've already got this on click. And I don't know off the top of my head, I need to Google, you know, how to get double click. <laughs> on DBL click? You gotta be kidding me. That's ridiculous, but hey, let's see if it works. Is that gonna work on DBL? Click. Let me just do a console.log to see if that does anything. I'll save that. And then double click on a file. I gotta open the dev tools first. Double click on a file. I'm not seeing anything. But we're in React, so maybe there's something React specific. React on double click. Oh, nice. They renamed it to on double click. That's great. That's a ridiculous name, DBL click. So let's try that. On double click, that reads a lot better. If I double click. All right, it prints out double. Woohoo! It also selects the text, which we don't want, but I think I'll deal with that later. Now that we are getting that event, let's follow the same pattern and just call this prop that gets passed in, and let's call it on file double click. On file double click needs to come in from the props. So on file double click and this line is now over 80 characters long 
which is my red line. So I'm going to refactor this and say, okay, we're going to get some props. And then we can unpack all this stuff and spread it out. And then we have to say const. All right, all that should work. But now we need to pass in on file double click into this file list component from uh, the component one level up, which is, I believe, code editor. No, that's not it. It's um, index.js here. Yeah, file list. See there we're passing in on file click. And we can just say on file double click equals on file double click. But again, we need to get this from above. So I'm going to add this to this section here on file double click. And then now we need to pass this in from the component above, which is the IDE component. So we've got index.js. Mm, no, first we've got IDE, and where is it? On file click, on file double click, and then we pass that into the visualization editor. On file double click. Okay, now we're ready to define this in our uh, Redux-ish code in map dispatch to props. So we can say on file double click, we do get the file name still. Uh, we dispatch a new event, let's call it um, rename file. And we do need to know what file it is, so I'll pass in file name. All right, so the next thing to do is define rename file, which I just made up right now. So that's going to be an action creator. So we're, we're going to import that from action creators. I'll say rename file. And then I have to actually define that in the action creators file. So here in action creators, let's define, let's say, export const. It's going to be very similar to new file created. It's going to be called rename file. It's going to take as input a file name. It's going to attach that file name to that action, but the type will be uh, rename file. But now we need to define this constant, which I just made up. So up here, we need to say, OK, import that from the action types. And then in the action types, we need to define that. I'll say uh, rename file. And we attach a prefix to the string rename file. All right, so we've got our action type and our action creator. So we should be dispatching that action. So nothing's going to happen. We're just dispatching the action. But let me just make sure nothing breaks. See if I double click. OK, nothing broke. So let's move on to the next step. The next step is to create an epic using Redux Observable. And this is a very similar epic, which prompts for the new file name. So what I'm going to do is just copy this into a new file. I'll put it in the epics directory and call it prompt for rename epic. And then we can open up this file. And instead of responding to create new file, we want to respond to rename file, which we need to import from the action types. So when we get this action, the new file name should be ret retrieved from the user from this prompt. It says, please enter a file name. Um, I guess that's fine. But we should pass in the existing name of the file, which is actually there in action 
dot file name I'm pretty sure let me just double check that in the uh, action creators in the action creators we've got rename file yeah file name is there so we can say action dot file name and that should be the old name all right but what we should return is not a new file created event it, it's going to be a new a new action called uh, let's say file renamed and the reducer that handles this is going to need to know what the old file name was actually um, in order to rename it so let's actually pass in old file name and new file name here and the new file name is going to be the one that gets returned from the prompt and the old file name is going to be action.file name all right we've got our old name our new name and we're returning this file renamed which doesn't exist yet we need to create that which it will be an action creator and actually we don't need new file created we just need file renamed and I'm realizing we don't need from from rxjs we're not using that all right let's create file renamed in action creators so we open up action creators uh, we create a new export called file renamed and this is going to take as input well uh, these arguments here old file name and new file name and it's going to create an action of type file renamed which I'll have to create and this should include the old file name and the new file name on the action uh, now we need to create this file renamed type so we can import that from action types and then over in action types we need to define this it's going to be file renamed I'll say file renamed is just yeah prefix file renamed there we go let's see if this works so far oh no action types does not contain an export named file renamed ah it does now all right so if I double click uh, it's not happening I'm not getting that prompt something's not right here oh I think we just created that epic but didn't uh, use it yeah I think that's the problem so we have to wire this up to our app so in index.js in epics yeah we need to export this prompt for new well actually let's let's rename this to match the file name prompt for rename epic and then prompt for rename epic from prompt for rename epic all right now we're exporting it we need to use it now in the app so close everything I'll navigate over to our app our testing app where um, the root of everything is set up so we need to unpack this epic from the epics import its prompt prompt for rename epic there it is and then when we create our epic middleware we need to combine these epics and include this epic as well all right so now it should work let's see if it does so if I double click boom please enter a file name I feel like that should say like please enter a new file name 
Yeah, so I'll just make that change. That's in prompt for rename epic. Please enter a new file name. And let's punctuate. Why not? All right, we can double click, enter a new name. Let's call it uh, poop.js. But it doesn't get renamed. Nothing happens. What we need to do next is implement the reducer that handles this action. So let's go over to our uh, reducers. And this is going to still be the files reducer that handles this. So let's add a new case. Case file renamed. And we've got to import that from our action types. File renamed. And what do we do in this case? I know that we have action dot old file name and we've got action dot new file name and what we want to do is well remove the old file and create this new file but keep the text of the old file and we've got state here which is an array of file objects, each, w each of which has a name and a text property. You know, we already have a case that's really similar, which is changing the file text. Um, this just maps over all the files and then checks if the name meet matches the, the name of the file that we're working on. And if it does, it assigns the text to the new text. Uh, we want to do the same exact thing, but just assign the name of the file instead of the text. So let me just copy this uh, structure and change it to do what we need. If the file name matches action.old file name, because we want to yeah, get that old file name, we should assign to that file not the text, but the name and we should assign it to be action.newFileName. And if it doesn't match, just return the other, you know, the existing file. All right, let's see if this works. I double click index.js, I'll uh, index uh, not. And then if I click OK, oh no! A terrible error. Cannot read property text of undefined. Oh, this is kind of interesting because it's trying to look up the active file, and the active file is based on the active the name of the file, which is the old name. So this is like a something we need to address. What should happen here is that the active file in the Redux state, if it is the file that's being renamed, then it should actually change to the new name when the rename happens. Let's take a look at our reducers. We do have a reducer for active file name. So I think what we need to do here is add a new case for file renamed. So what I'm going to do is say, all right, Let's add a new case for file renamed, and we import file renamed from the action types. What have we got here? We've got state, which is the name of the active file. So what we want to do is say if the state, our active file name, is the same as the old file name of our action, then we should return the new file name. So we've got an if. Uh, what happens if this is not true? Um, well, I don't think we need an else because it just falls through to the default case and returns 
you know, the existing name of the active file. So I think this should work. Let's try it out. So I'll call this foo.js. Boom! It renamed. Hell yeah. All right. This is fantastic. So what I want to do is make a commit that closes out this issue. And I think we do have an open issue for this on our scrum board. Yeah, in our to-do, we've got rename file. Actually, I should have self-assigned this earlier, but I'll self-assign it now. And this is number 16. So I'm going to make a commit. Git commit. Rename file closes number, what was it again? Number 16. Booyah, so satisfying. Get okay, push. By the way, if you say closes number something in your git commit message, then uh, that issue will automatically be closed when the pull request gets merged which is super useful. All right, so the last thing I want to work on in this pull request is deleting files. So I'm starting to work on this, so I'm going to assign myself. And let's consider uh, what should this look like. I think the simplest possible interaction would be that if you hit the delete key on the keyboard, it will delete the currently active file. But probably we should prompt the user uh, to say, you know, do you really want to delete this? The first step would be to catch that delete key. Uh, but if you hit the delete key when you're in a file, it should not do it. Um, so I think we need to check, like, is this focused or not? Um, because if you click on one of these, the editor is no longer focused. I'm not sure. That's kind of a subtle point. Um, I think we can address that later. Let's work on the core of it so that if you hit the delete key anywhere, uh, it'll delete the currently active file. Or, you know, I wonder, I wonder if there's a way to like have this region um, get focused so we could add an event listener just when that has focus, that would be the ideal thing. I wonder, can a div have focus? Yeah, there's this thing called tab index. So if we search for a tab index on uh, MDN, the yeah, the tab index global attribute indicates if its element can be focused. That's exactly what we want. If we do this, then we should be able to attach uh, keyboard listener directly to this uh, this box on our left. Let's take a look at that box in our code. I'll close out these files. That would be the visualization editor component. In fact, it would be... Let me see. Actually, it would be the file list component. That's what we need. The file list component. Uh, currently, it's a React fragment, so there's no containing DOM element, but I think we can just change this to a div and say, okay, let's try out this tab index. Tab index is... Well, what should it be? A negative value means that the element should be focusable but not reachable with sequential keyboard navigation. Interesting. Uh, tab index 0 means it should be focusable. That sounds good to me. Let's try tab index is 0. And then change that to div. But the whole point of this is to add a add a key listener to this. I think the event we want is on key down or key press. Let me try on key down to see if it does anything. So it's console.log key down. Uh, 
and let's see if that works over here I should focus this oh my goodness look at that it's got a border around it so if I press a key oh my god it works key down hell yeah this is great uh, and if I press a key over here we don't get that event which is exactly what we want all right so when we focus this when we press any key we get this key down but we want to only um, do something when the when the key down is the delete key or the backspace key yeah let's make it work for delete or backspace I think that would be pretty good let's uh, refactor this a bit and say on key down is on key down and we can define this over here and say const on key down equals this function here and we can make it a little you know expansive and I believe we get an event and on this event we can say uh, key code I think let me try that and see if we can get any codes from this So console.log event.keycode. So I focus, press, ha! Huh, I just pressed the D character and I got 68. And I press F, I get 70. And if I press backspace, we get 8. If I press delete, we get 46. So I'll copy those two. And I'll say, all right, paste that in here. Uh, this is backspace. Is eight and uh, the other number is 46 which is delete const delete is 46 so if our event dot key code equals backspace or our event dot key code equals delete then let's uh, console dot log delete something all right let's try this out if I give this focus, I press on D, get nothing. I press space, get nothing. If I press backspace, boom, we get delete something. If I press on delete, we get delete something. All right, this looks like a pretty proper trigger for dispatching some actions. So instead of saying console.log delete something, we can say on file delete. we invoke that as a function and that's something that we can get from the props I mean I just made it up we have to define what it is but let's say it's a prop on file delete and uh, considering this will be an action uh, we're gonna need to know what file should be deleted and we already have active file name available here so I think I'll just pass in active file name into that function on file delete all right so now we just need to drill that uh, inside from the outside so this is our file list component which gets invoked from I think index.js let me see yeah file list so let's add a new prop on file delete equals on file delete and this we just get from outside as well on file delete from the props that gets passed into visualization editor I can close our file list 
And then the thing that invokes visualization editor is the IDE component. So when we invoke our visualization editor, we can say on file delete equals on file delete. And this again we need to get from the props on file delete. And this component, IDE, is invoked from index.js, which is our Redux container component. So we can define it, really define it now, in map dispatch to props. On file delete is a function that takes as input the file name to be deleted and then dispatch a new action and let's call it delete file and pass in the file name. The next step is to define delete file which I just made up close out IDE and then the, at the top of this file we need to get that from the action creators delete file and then we need to define it in the action creators so over here we can say um, well it's very similar to rename file so I'll just copy paste that and then change rename to delete and the type will be a new type delete file which we need to import from our action types delete file um, and we need to define it there inside action types so I'll close that out and close this too and then in action types we could say delete file is a prefix with delete file. All right, so now we should be dispatching this new action, delete file. I just want to see if nothing breaks. If I had delete, okay, nothing breaks, but nothing happens also, which is to be expected because we're not handling this anywhere. Next, we need to handle delete file. What we want to do here is pop open a dialog that says, are you sure you want to delete this? This is going to be an epic. It's going to be just like prompt for rename or prompt for new file. So I'm just going to copy this file. Let's say copy this file into this other file, which would be prompt for delete. But it's not exactly a prompt, is it? Um, let me just look up what that JavaScript thing is. I think it's called a confirm. Yeah, window.confirm. Let's try it. This is exactly what we want. So this is not a prompt, but this is a confirm. So instead of prompt, I'll say confirm. Uh, whoops. Confirm delete epic. All right, so now we've got a new file, confirm delete epic, which we need to modify. So instead of responding to create new file, we're going to respond to delete file. So for actions of type delete file, what we want to do is, well, we're not going to get a file name. We're just going to, um, well, what, what is that? It's just confirm. All right, so that's what we need to do is just invoke confirm. Are you sure? And that should return something.
I'll call it uh, confirmed. And let's just see that what that is. Console.log confirmed. Let's just see what that is. Because um, I think, you know, you could say yes or no. OK or cancel. So if, we, if you click OK, we want to dispatch the action that a file was deleted or will be deleted. And if we cancel, we don't want to dispatch any action. So let's see what happens. Um, let's return null for now, just to see what this confirmed value is. So over here, I click on something, click delete. Oh, nothing happened. Oh, we need to wire up those darn uh, epics. All right, let's do that. So in index here, we need to say export confirm delete epic from confirm delete epic. And then in our app, our testing app, index, we're going to get that out of our epics, confirm delete epic, and then let's combine that with all the other epics, confirm delete epic. So now it should be wired up and ready to go. Oh no, unexpected use of confirm. No restricted globals. What, I can't use confirm? Is it, is it off limits? What the heck? I mean, why is that restricted? Is it like bad practice or something? Try adding window. Yeah, that makes sense, because it is a global and it should be on window, really. So let's do that. Window dot confirm. And you know, I'm surprised that the other one didn't uh, signal that same thing, because that's a global too. Should be the same thing there. Window dot prompt and then prompt for new name. That should also be window.prompt. I'm pretty sure. All right, let's see if it works now. Mm, what is this? Cannot read property apply of undefined. Epic.applies. Uh, are we giving it undefined as an epic? Whoa, we got a bunch of warnings. No, I didn't see these before. I'll have to address those. Looks like mainly linting, though. But anyway, this is the main problem. Cannot read property apply if undefined. One of our epics is undefined. Confirm delete epic. Oh, I forgot to rename this. That's the, that's the thing about copy pasting. Gotta be really careful. I gotta rename this to confirm delete epic in the export. I wonder. All right, let's see if this works. Delete. Ha! Are you sure? All right. Yes, I'm sure. Whoa. Actions must be plain objects. I think it's because I returned null. Uh, what do we do if we want to return nothing and not do anything? Well, anyway, I just want to know what that value was that came back. It was true. So I clicked OK, yes. Um, but if I hit delete and click cancel, the value is false. All right, so that's good to know. So what we could do here is if confirmed. Then we should return a new action that should actually go ahead and delete this file. And in keeping with the other names, let me close out this other stuff. Let's call it uh, file deleted. File deleted. Return file deleted. But otherwise, 
I really do just want to return null, but I think there's something cool in RxJS that we can use to like filter out these nulls. I'm not sure. I think I'll come back to that later. I just want to get the basic flow working. So if this is true, then I'll return this and then we won't see that crazy error. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get it to work. What we need to do next is define file deleted in our action creators. So let's go to our action creators. Uh, file deleted. Um, file name, yeah, I think, that, yeah, the reducer is going to need to know the file name. So, you know, we really should pass in the file name, which is action.filename. Because keep in mind, action here is one of these delete file actions, which has file name available. All right, so we're going to pass in file name to our file deleted action creator. And the type will be file deleted, which we need to import as uh, file deleted from action types. And we need to define it in action types. File deleted is prefix of file deleted. All right, we've got it now as an action type. And we've got the action creator. So I think this should work. This should dispatch the action. There's no reducer yet, but I'm just going to Test it out and see if it breaks. Hit okay, delete. Say OK. Oh, there's something broken. Actions must be plain objects. I don't know. It should be dispatching that. It should be, you know, confirmed as true. It should return file deleted. Let me just console.log here to make sure that we're getting to this place. Delete. OK. Hey, the error didn't happen that time. And this got logged out. Um, maybe I was just looking at some stale code or something. You know, I just got too many tabs open. Let's try that again. I hit delete. OK. And in the div tools, there should be no errors. Okay, there's no errors. We're fine. It was a false alarm. Like the Twilight Zone. All right, so we're good uh, with that. Now let's handle this in our files reducer and actually um, remove the file from the list. It's so cool how Redux works, you know, separating these concerns like this. So in our files reducer, but this reducer is getting pretty big. We had a new case for file deleted, which we have to import from the action types. File deleted. So if we've got this case, well, we've got state, which is our array of file objects, each of which has a name and a text property. So what we want to do is return the that list just filtered by, you know, just to without that file, which is action dot file name. This is the name of the file that we want to filter out from our list. So we could say return, whoops, return state dot filter it's an array and we could say file and we filter out mm, if the file dot name equals action dot file name 
But maybe this should be not equals, actually, because I believe filter, if you return true, it keeps it, and if you return false, it filters it out. And so we want to return true most of the time and return false if the names don't match. I don't know, now I'm just confusing myself. Let's just see if this works. So, if I hit delete and click OK, it should get removed. No, it doesn't. Something bad happened. Oh, again, the active file. It's the active file. Oh, man. That's a great thing to consider. So if we delete a file, uh, what should the active file be? I don't know. I mean, maybe it should just be like the next file in the list or the previous file or just a random file. Or we could have it so that there's no file selected and it'd be blank, but I don't know. Well, one thing about this whole system is that it won't work unless there's an index.html. So I think it's, uh, well, actually, we should prohibit people from deleting index.html. But barring that, you know, if you delete a file, let's say that index.html should become the focused, uh, the active file. But the upshot is, I think it worked, and we're seeing this, like, follow-on error related to the active file. So again, let's go into our active file name reducer and handle that case of file deleted file deleted. Let's add a new case. File deleted. And it's going to be really similar to this file renamed case because we want to check. Is the current active file, which is state here, is that the same as action.file name? And action here is the deleted, you know, so file name, action.file name is the file name of the file that has been deleted. In this case, let's just return index.html. And it feels like a bit of a hack, but uh, I think it's okay, because the whole system depends on index.html being there. So let's see if this works now. If I delete styles.css, press OK. Boom! It's gone, and index.html becomes the highlighted file. All right, this is pretty sweet. Nailed it. Got it done. So let me make a commit. Just check what changed. Oh boy, a lot of things changed. And we have two new files. So we really need to do a git add to make sure we get those new files. And then do a git commit. Delete file. Close this number. What was that? Delete file? 25. Close this number 25. Boom. All right, now this pull request is no longer work in progress. So I'm going to remove that, and uh, maybe some folks can review this. All right, so that's sort of down in the trenches of uh, writing the code. And I think what we can do now is check off some boxes. File management is done. Create, rename, and delete. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of that. Take care.